Hello and welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B here on the beautiful next island. Uh, going to go ahead and make my second video for the Ascension Armor competition for March of 2021. Uh, today is March 4th. We just got done shooting the first video. I'm sorry we had some technical difficulties there at the end of the first video. But want to go ahead and get right into the second one. So second one is something that has probably been touched on in previous videos, but I want to take it a few steps further. So I'm here at Paradise Landing, and first thing I want to do is I want to show you guys the storage that we have here, because this will be important momentarily. So construction, storage, here we go. So I don't even know what's in my storage um, since the last time I was here. So I've got some Elysian Tech Chips, I've got some random different stuff. Uh, I've got a dress. Okay, so not a lot in storage. Okay, it's cool. So notice that the things that I do have in storage here is just all this right here, right? Okay, so first things first, because I know there's a lot of players that are going to ask, this video is going to be explaining something important about storage and also how to get to ancient Greece because literally the moment I landed here in the last video I had somebody message me in game and they're like hey Stevie cool thanks for the YouTube videos hey man can you show me how to get to ancient Greece so let me help you guys out so I'm at Paradise Landing so Paradise Landing is here bottom right hand of the map right and then here is the entire next island map so today I'm going to show you guys how to get to ancient Greece. So down here you will notice that in this bottom corner of the map we've got a teleporter here, a teleporter here, a teleporter here, a teleporter here, a little PvP non-lootable zone here, teleporter here. And then you'll see there's two teleporters up here. Orpheus Way and Orpheus Cave. So Orpheus Cave is where we want to go but we cannot teleport into Orpheus Cave. It's not possible. So I'm going to teleport to Orpheus Way. Now we could fly there um, if we fly there from Paradise Landing, it is roughly 3,000 meters, 2,940 meters. If I'm standing on the teleporter, it is 2,933 meters. So um, I'm not going to fly there. I'm not going to run there. We're just going to go ahead and er, we're going to teleport in there. So first things first. Let's teleport in. Now, if you guys have a uh, sleep, if you have a quad, it is not that hard to get there. Um, it does not take that long. A couple of minutes, probably two or three minutes. But let's go ahead and let's just teleport over. Ah, somebody's using Mind Force. So, here we are. This is Orpheus Way, not Orpheus Cave. Orpheus Way. So, now... I'm going to create a waypoint for Orpheus Cave. And you'll notice it is right up there in those mountains. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and run over there. Um, I usually use my quad, but I want you guys to see why I'm doing it this way. I want to see if I can get there on foot. Also notice this right here. Notice it looks like it's Ancient Greek, so this gives us a hint of where we're headed since we're headed to Ancient Greece, right? So I want to show you guys, especially for the new players, I want to show you how this is done, and then I want to show you something about the storage thing that I showed you a while ago. So we're going to dive in, and there's a reason I am doing these videos first. Um, I've got some things here on Next Island that I want to get to, but I want to get these out of the way for a very important reason. Just run with me, you guys will see why as we go. Hey, Superman fly. So I hope all the Stevies are doing good. Thank you guys for helping support EarnPed.com. The more you earn, the more we earn. That is by far the best way you guys can help support us. Guys, it has been horrendous in real life the past couple of months. It has not gotten any better. It is a day-by-day -day brutal disaster. Um, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to put it out here for you guys. It's very personal, very private. Uh, but needless to say, the past three and a half months have been a living hell. Um, every single day, it is bad. There was literally a day a couple weeks ago, I just cried and broke down and literally like prayed for death, pretty much. 
um, it has been brutally bad. Um, it will get better. It's a matter of trying to get through it. The problem is I'm not the only one trying to get through it. So anyway, we will get there. So if for some reason I'm, I'm short on getting back to you guys or I'm slow on the responses for some reason, it, it's not you guys. It's, it's not anything to do with y'all. It's just I've got a lot going on in real life. And sometimes I'm surprised that I don't just completely break down and have a mental breakdown and an anxiety attack. So I want to let you guys know that up front. So getting here on foot, not too terribly hard. So here's the thing. A lot of people have a problem finding Orpheus Cave the first time. The problem is it's hidden behind this waterfall. And like I said, you can't teleport in. It's one of those things you have to know where it is and you have to get here the first time. And then once you've been here, it's pretty easy to get to. I usually will fly my quad literally right up to this waterfall. But I wanted to show you guys kind of on foot how to get here. So notice I'm not at the top of this little mountain ridge. And notice I'm not at the bottom. I'm kind of in the middle, right? So... Behind the waterfall, there is a cave entrance. Now, when you go into that cave entrance, the entire screen is going to shake a little bit. See the entrance right there? So you can actually fly your quad right down through here, right under this waterfall. I usually line the quad right here. Now, watch the screen shake as I go into the cave. See how it shakes? So I guess it doesn't stop. I guess it just keeps shaking. So inside, there's some pillars. There's a little storage area. And we've got some players. Hey, Dante Inferno's here. And so is 190. So we've got a storage area. And again, notice this is all the storage that you saw a while ago when I was at Paradise Landing, right? So I'm going to go over to the teleporter. The Orpheus Cave teleporter. This is it. Notice it looks like it's ancient Greek. See they're teleporting in? I'm going to click on it. Now when I click, it pulls up a picture of Next Island. I'm going to go up here to the drop-down menu. See this little arrow that says Planet Selection? I can select Next Island, Space, or Ancient Greece. Well, I have no reason to select Space. So I'm going to hit Ancient Greece. And here come my Ancient Greece teleporters. So I want to go to... I believe it's this one. Oh, no. Let's go to Orpheus Cave. That's the one I want. Orpheus Cave. So that's the same way you get to like Arcadia Underground. If you're on Arcadia, you go to a teleporter, you use that drop-down list, and you switch the map to Arcadia Underground. Here, you switch it from Next Island to Ancient Greece. So, now notice, I'm standing on the same teleporter, and it's in Orpheus Cave, but it's not the same Orpheus Cave. That's because now I'm in Ancient Greece. So there's a pit. I'm not going to fall in that. I'll do that later. This is the old time travel crystal thingy, I think. This is why I'm here. We'll get to that in a second. And then if we come out this door right here. Wah! We are at Ancient Greece. That is Thebes Market over there. This is kind of like the beginning area of Ancient Greece. And if we look at the map, clearly Greece is big. It's very, very big, right? Um, so this is where the Gorgon wave goes on, the Gorgon shade, all that. We'll get to that momentarily. So that is how you get there. It's because of this drop down. So when you're on Next Island, you've got to physically go to Orpheus Way, which is here. You then have to travel either on foot or by vehicle to Orpheus Cave. Go to that teleporter in there. Select Ancient Greece from the drop down. And then if you've got teleporters, you can pick one. If not, just pick Orpheus Cave. And it takes you here. So it's the exact same cave, just older. So the general lore idea is this is what Next Island used to be. There's a whole lore back behind it. Anyway, same planet, time travel, kind of unique in Entropia. First and only time it was ever tried. Rather a good idea, if I do say so. Um, I think it's pretty unique and interesting. So the reason I came here first was A, not only to show you guys how to get here, but I want to get another one of the little auto loot ancient Greek lore pets. So... If I look here, if I open my vehicle inventory, I've got some of my old school lore pets that I brought with me. 
Um, these are the regular base models that we got back in 2019 during the lore event and then we were promised they would be auto loot but turns out that was accidentally programmed. Um, they did end up coming out with an ancient Greek version that you can get that does have auto loot. I already have one. I recently unlocked auto loot with it. I figured while I was here I would go ahead and snag a second one and I want to go ahead and get it early, make the videos about that and get moving on it that way i can shoot other videos while i'm leveling it up so i can take it home with me so um first things first before we get to that i want to show you guys what i was talking about with the storage um the reason i pointed that out and the reason it's such a big deal so i'm going to go to thebes market real quick I'm just going to teleport over There we go. Okay. So Thebes Market. Let everything load. Uh, trade terminal storage facility. Here we go. So this little pod is a storage facility. So we're going to click it. Looky there. The things that I have in my storage facility do not look the same. Hmm. I have a Medal of Heroism. I have some Lesser Elysian. And I have a Block Chisel. I've got something else apparently. Yes. So why do they look different? Because they're two different storage facilities. So if you're hunting in ancient Greece and you put stuff in your storage facility and then you just go back to Next Island, those things aren't going to be in your storage facility on Next Island. Next Island storage and ancient Greece storage is two completely different storages, guys. Um, it's like having Arcadia Underground storage and Planet Arcadia storage, two different storages. So each one acts like a regular storage, 500 item points. Um, but they are different. So if you leave something in Next Island and come to Ancient Greece, you're going to have to go back to Next Island for it. Vice versa, if you leave something in Ancient Greece and go to Next Island to get it, you're going to have to come back for it. So I wanted to point that out because that's something a lot of new players miss. They'll be in Next Island and they'll have a lot of stuff in storage. They'll come here and they'll go to storage to get a gun and, ah, oh, the gun's gone. Why is the gun gone? It's because you left it on Next Island. This isn't Next Island. This is a completely different area, completely different storage. Um, this is like the difference in Calypso storage and Rocktropia storage. Two different planets, right? Well, two different areas. So it does not act the same. So bring with you to Ancient Greece whatever you need and take home whatever you need to take home. So that is the big point I want to point out. So let's see if anything's changed since I was here. Trade, repair, auctioneer, construction machine, uh, lots of people standing around. Hmm, nothing really changed. Okay. So since that's the case, let's head back over here. Let's go back to the Orpheus Cave. So I will tell you guys up front, this is not something that is going to be super handy for a lot of lower level players. This is going to be um, not something you want to do your first month or two in game. This is going to be a little bit further down the road. Um, also on my way here, I went to local and I typed slash help. And notice it brings up all these different functions. So I was able to search uh, slash channel list and then I put what I wanted in the name. Uh, which was island slash channel list next. Hmm. Anyway, there's a command. Where is it right here? List channels. Oh, sorry. List channels, not channel list. Slash list channels. And then I want it sorted by island. And it shows me all the different channels for island. Um, there's Akis Island with three members, something else island, two members, next island. 242 members next island here 2570 members so this is the one I want so I'm going to join channel so now I've joined that channel so I'm going to go up here to main this is not the one I want and this one the one with the little uh, underscore I'm going to leave that one so I don't want that one so this is the one I want next island all one word hashtag next island so that's going to give me all the information for Next Island. So now if I, it's essentially the, the Cali trade of Next Island. This is everything Next Island related. related. Um, I can also do, if I go back to, oh, that's not my one. If you're going to be coming here, you're going to need this, guys. Um, slash list channels ancient. Ancient Greece. Ancient seniors. Uh, something else. So we're going to join Ancient Greece as well. 
because I'm going to need that one too. So now I've got next island and I've got ancient Greece. So we're going to keep both those active along with Cali trade. So now I can see everything about ancient Greece, next island, and Cali trade. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit main and on ancient Greece I'm going to change the color to orange. So now uh, ancient Greece will be orange. Next island will be kind of pink and Cali trade will be blue. So now I can see everything that's going on in all three of those channels right here under my main tab, right? So that's pretty cool. If you're going to be coming, definitely be sure and do that. So now that we've got those basics out of the way, I want to start the mission for my special pet. So I'm going to come here to Peric and I'm going to talk to him. Oh, hello. Yes, you'll do. I've been working on this experiment to try and make what you travelers call dot 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 a robot. Okay, how can I help? Well, I'm not exactly much of an adventurer myself, but I need a number of different components in order to bring this project to life. Should I give you access to a place where you can try and tame it? So what exactly do you need? Glad you asked. I need the following. Tooth enamel, iron blood extracts, and nickel blood extracts. I think that is at least according to my experience. Do you know where I can find these? Well, according to travelers like yourself, I do believe they can acquire it from Argus, Brontus, and Myronites. I could never stop researching and experiment myself to confirm. Anything else? Yes, yes, yes. I also need you to travel back to your universe and fetch me 20 of those lore robots, the lore robot I showed you to begin with. And then that's it. I think so. 20 lores? That's a lot. Oh, yes. Well, this is an experiment, so make sure I might make some mistakes. I need uh, to make sure I have enough. Anyway, no time to waste. See if you can find them. Cool. Wonderful. Oh, simply brilliant. Well, I must get back to my experiments. Rumbles, they told me it was impossible. I'll show them. I'll be back. Okay, cool. So I need to find 500 points of tooth enamel, iron blood extracts, nickel blood extracts, blah, blah, blah. So, long story short, we're going to go do that first. Um, I'm actually probably going to try and break this into two videos. We're probably going to start this part, and then we'll probably end the video here in a minute and go do a second part to try and finish it up, because I want to get through this part of it as fast as I possibly can, because I want you guys to not only see this happen, I also want you to see how we tame it, because there's a very special way you need to tame it, especially if you're not a super high-level player. Um, so we'll get to that. So I'm going to jump over to Thebes Market. So the very first time I did this, I've only done it once. Um, I thought you had to do three different things. Essentially, I believe you can just hunt the same thing over and over again until all three of these fill up. On the last video, I asked you guys, do you think the competition is better the way they're doing it, or would it be better doing something like this? This is what I was talking about. Um, I think it would have been better to set up the competition doing something like this because that would have given all players an opportunity to go for it that's just my personal opinion but that is not how they went with it I'm going to equip my armor as I go um, so whenever I said in my last video do you guys think it's better the way they're doing it or do you think it would have been better this way this is what I meant this is the kind of thing I was talking about where you have something that all players can do. All players can participate in. All players can have a chance to finish the mission, do a certain number of kills, whatever, and end up getting uh, the reward as a result. So this is what I was talking about, was a mission kind of like this. So anybody can come do this. Like I said, if you're a lower level player, it's not going to be super easy, um, simply for the fact of what you have to do once you go in to tame it. Um, and the, the kind of materials you need and the level of skills and equipment, but you can at least get this part out of the way. So if you are a low-level player and you're wanting to benefit from the ability to tame these uh, auto loot pets and train them up, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, before we get there, I want to be sure that we've got everything good to go here. So that one's good to go. Good, good, good. Good to go there. Good to go there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take the Leap of Doom off the wall. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's get to hunting and I will explain to you guys how to make money um, even if you're a low level player uh, from this auto loot pet mission. So, first things first, notice he said that part of this mission is after I do all this, I've got to come up with 20 Laura pets. Luckily, I have 20 Laura pets. Uh, if I don't have 20, I should have pretty close to 20, 
just sitting in my storage. Let's go ahead and use this one. So if you've already got 20, cool, but there's a lot of players that come here to do this, um, either for the first time or on their second or third one, that they don't have 20, right? Okay, let's turn that sound down. So one way that I've seen people making money, um, especially newer players, Cyclops Challenge Unlocked. Oh, cool. So I've got Codex now, and I've got 1.3 points of 500. Um, one way that I've seen players making money that are lower level is if you need something like 20 lore pets, you might not want to spend the time taming them as a player, right? Well, there's a lot of lower level players who can tame them that don't mind taking the time. I had several friends whenever this auto loot pet first came out that they made money strictly by coming to Next Island and taming a whole bunch of lures for people. So they would find two or three people that needed lures tamed, they'd go out, tame however many was required, and they would get paid either per tame or a set fee for the entire lot. Um, so that is one way to do it. Another way to do it is if you want to literally just help level a pet up. Some people come and they get the auto loot pet, but they don't want to stay here for the two, three days it takes to level it up to level seven so it can be exported to a different planet. Well, if you're already on Next Island and you're already spending a lot of time here as a free or low depot player, you come to somebody that is getting the auto loot pet but doesn't want to stay here for several days and you say, hey, I tell you what, I'm going to be here anyway. If you will feed the pet and be sure I have enough Nutrio bars to keep it fed, I will keep it out, I'll play with it, I'll level it up to level 7, and then I'll bring it to you on Calypso. And you negotiate a price for that, because essentially you're already going to be on the planet anyway, they want to go back home to Cali or Arcadia or wherever they want to go, so you're essentially using your time um, to their benefit, which means you can charge money for that. So the question is how much? That is something for you to negotiate one-on-one. -on -one. They give you the pet, and obviously I'm sure you'd probably give them something of value in return, and then you spend a couple days leveling it up. Once it's at level 7, you can then export it to any other planet. So once it gets to level 7, they either come back and get it, or you go to whatever planet they're on and you deliver it, you receive your money, and you're good to go. Um, so those are two ways that even if you don't have the skills, equipment, and level, and experience, and all that to actually tame the auto loot pet yourself, that is two ways you can make good money if you know somebody is coming after one of those auto loot pets either just help level it up so they don't have to spend more time here than they want to or go out and tame the auto, the regular lore pets that way they don't have to spend a lot of time trying to tame 20 regular lore pets um, so two good options for low level and non-depot players right there so as you'll see i'm getting both tooth enamel and nickel blood extracts just by hunting these guys right here these little cyclopses i'm also getting codex i did not get codex last time i was here because last time I was here, Codex did not exist. Now, one thing I will tell you about these guys is they do hit a little bit harder than you would think they would. I'm currently using a BC-40 uh, because I'm just trying to hammer this away as fast as I can. And I don't want to pull out the BP-20 FEN to just hammer away at this. Um, it would just take too long. It would not make for an interesting video. Um, so I'm just trying to hammer it away at it pretty quickly. I'm also trying to do as little faffing as possible. So I've got my ghost armor on. It gives me a little bit better protection than my just pixie, especially with these guys. Um, the very first time I did this, when I got my first auto loot pet, I did not think these guys would hit quite that hard or quite as fast. They also tend to have a pretty good aggravation range. So trying to use a pistol isn't necessarily ideal, as very often I would end up with like two, three, four of them on me. Um, it just was not super, super beneficial the first time I did it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to knock some more of these out. And I apologize, guys. I know I'm covering a lot of ground very, very quickly. Um, these videos, unfortunately, have to be 30 minutes long to qualify for the competition. My videos are usually 20 minutes long. And I do not really want to make videos that are just random watch me do stuff. I want everything to have a point. I want everything to have information in it. And unfortunately, sometimes I have to cram a lot of information into a much shorter video instead of getting to spend as much time as I would like to um, going over a video about just a certain amount of information. Um, if I could make 20-minute videos instead of 30, I could probably condense it down into fewer subjects per video. But unfortunately, I don't get that option, so we're doing it this way. Um, so notice I'm also getting iron blood extracts now. So the, the key is the points. You need 500 points 
to finish this part of it. I'm at 20.3 already, so this should not take very long. Like I said, I know we're going to have to split this into two videos. Uh, actually, we're probably going to have to split it into three videos total. But I'm trying to get them all knocked out this afternoon since I happen to have a day off. And also trying to keep my mind off all the BS I'm going to have to deal with after this is over. Because after these videos are over, I have a lot of real life BS i got to put up with. So let's keep knocking these guys out. You'll notice um, one thing about this that I'm getting. Look at the loot. Um, you'll see that I'm getting a few things that are useful in Entropia as a whole. And I'm getting a lot of stuff that's only useful on Next Island or Ancient Greece. And this is an argument that I had. I wouldn't even call it an argument. Discussion I had, I should say. Um, with some of the Next Island development team. And they thought I was just plumb wrong. So you guys tell me what you think. The Entropia Universe as a whole is not a great game. It's just not. Um, that's my personal opinion. If this was anything other than a real cash economy, this game would be deader than a doornail and it would be the most boring game ever played. Now, that, like I said, is just my personal opinion. Um, the fact that this game is a real cash economy is what makes it unique. It's what makes it playable. It's what makes it satisfying. And it's why we keep coming back to it. So, the argument that I had was, I said, look, one of the biggest problems that Next Island has, one of the biggest problems that uh, Ancient Greece has, is a lot of the loot that you get is not useful in the rest of the universe. It's just not. It's these chlorite crystal, cyclops pouch, um, celestite stone, bloodstone crystal. There's a lot of stuff that you get here that is just not useful elsewhere. Um, so the argument I made was if they would just get rid of like 90% of the random loot that drops and instead replace it with stuff that is actually useful throughout the universe, more people would come hunt. I have to be able to hunt for profit. I have to be able to hunt for stuff that is going to drop in my loot that is going to have a high enough markup to make it worth hunting. Um, if I can't do that, there's no point in me hunting. So if I've got a lot of stuff that has no use, no demand, no markup, and that's all I'm really getting in my loot, then I really can't come here very often and I can't hunt. Um, and the response I got was, well, you're kind of wrong. Um, yes, the, the market and the markup and the real cash economy, that's a part of the game, but a lot of players play for other reasons. They play for just enjoyment of playing, as if this was a good game, or they play for the camaraderie or the, the society aspect. Anyway, I, I, my recommendation of get rid of all this random stuff in the loot that has no purpose and no markup and replace it with stuff that has purpose and markup was pretty much blown to the side with the excuse, well, that's not the only reason people play. So guys, like I said, these videos are a part of the way you guys can show the development team over at Next Island, um, an actual planet partner, how you really feel. Would you come to Next Island? Would you come to Ancient Greece? If instead of all this random loot that's only good on Next Island and Ancient Greece that has very little demand, very little markup, and is essentially TT food, was taken out of the loot pool completely and replaced with the staples of the game that has markup, that has uses on all planets, not just here. In fact, let's look at it while we got a second. Um, these crystals right here, market value. No demand. No demand. 182 ped total have sold in the entire year, none in the past month. And I've just looted almost two ped worth. Animal oil residue, uh, very, very little markup, virtually none. Less than 1% markup. Uh, Cyclops pouch, no demand. None sold in the past month, only 117 ped in the past year, and I've just got two ped. Chlorite crystal, none in the past week. Only 31 ped in the past month and only at a 1% markup. Celeste Stone, no demand for the day or week, only 75 ped for the entire month, 101% markup. Now I do have some Socket 2 components, I do have one high definition UI, uh, a couple of paint cans, some inferior cloth extractors. Uh, the Hematite Crystals do have some uses now with the new daily missions that give blueprints which we'll cover in future videos. So some demand, some markup, but not anything near what you have for a profitable hunt, right? So, let your voice be heard. Use the comment section to speak out to the development team. Would you guys come to Next Island? Would you come to Ancient Greece? And would you actually spend time and money hunting? 
if you were able to hunt in the same way that you can on Arcadia or Rocktropia or Calypso, where the items actually had demand, had markup, had value, and you could actually make money hunting. It is literally impossible to make money hunting like this. It's just not possible. So let them know in the comments, is this game a game you play because of the real cash economy aspect, which is what makes it unique, or is this just magically the best game ever made and I'm missing it somehow? Because I can tell you right now, if I was a planet partner, the very first thing I would do, I would rip all this junk out of the loot pool and replace it with stuff that was actually decent, that a good, well-equipped, well-trained, knowledgeable player could hunt profitably with. Um, and I'm not talking TT profit, I'm talking 90-95% hunting return. Take it back to Calypso, take it to Rocktropia, Arcadia, even here on Next Island, and be able to sell it for a profit very first thing I would do to bring a dead planet back to life, rip all this junk out of the loot pool. Just rip it out completely, throw it away, start from scratch, and go, okay, let's just put in the stuff that actually makes players want to hunt. Because this ain't it. And like I said, I've, I've preached this until I'm blue in the face, and the response I get every time is, oh no, people don't just play for the money. Well, no, they don't just play for the money, otherwise you'd just go get a job at McDonald's and make more money. But without the real cash economy, without being able to do it for a profit, it, there, there's no reason to do it. If I wanted to just blow money um, that I knew I was going to lose, I would just go get another uh, relationship going where I would go to the casino and put it in the worst slot machine I could find, or I would just go give it to charity. Um, at this point, that's all this is. And from the Planet Partner st standpoint, the more people you can get hunting, the more people you can get mining, the more people you can get on your planet, the better, because you're making your money off decay. You're making your money off repairs. Well, if nobody's hunting, you're not making money. And yeah, there's some people that are hunting, and there's some people that do it just to be the first to do it. Um, Bonnie, JBK, um, there there are people here, Lunchbox, there, there are people here who do it to go after a rare item, but this isn't it. You know, we have hundreds of Stevies at North Swamp Camp hunting Exosaur Young. Why? Because they drop Blazer Fragments. Why? Because Blazer Fragments have markup and allow them to be profitable as low depot or free-to-play players. If these guys dropped something that had a 8-900% markup and they dropped it pretty regularly, don't you think this place would be flooded with players? Don't you think money would just rain from the sky? So what do you guys think? Put it in the comments below. Is this a game that you would play without the real cash economy, without the markup? How many of you would actually come here and hunt and mine and do all these things if this loot pool of junk with no demand and no markup was replaced with stuff that was actually useful, had a purpose in game, had demand, had markup that you could actually turn around and sell on auction? How many of you would actually come here? Put it in the comments below, guys. So guys, right now, I am at roughly 59.2 points on my way to 500. And I guess not all of these count. Maybe they do. Hold on, let's see. Let's do one more kill. Maybe it's maturity? No, they all count. Um, so guys, we're at 60 points. We're going to go ahead and we're going to end this video right here. And I'm going to go ahead and get started on the next one because we've got to bang out these 500 points first. Once we bang out these 500 points, then we can move on to the second part and trade everything in with the Lord of Pets and then I want to actually take you guys into the instance and show you how to tame the auto loot pet here at Next Island because there's some things that you can do to make it easier. It does not have to be something where you're the highest end player to tame it. It's also not something that a brand new player is going to be able to do but there are things that you can do that will help you. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. For right now, sip sip, smack smack, F the haters and thank you guys for watching if you guys would do me a favor hit that like button put those comments down there use this as your opportunity to get a hold of a planet partner development team and let them know what you think um, let them know ways they can improve the game uh, if you want to help support us hop over to earnped.com because when you earn we earn that is by far the best way you can support us other way you can support us is by subbing the channel and hitting that like button on every single video because the haters are still out there hitting the dislike button as soon as we post them Unfortunately, that is the world we live in, guys. Also, if you're wanting a withdrawal from EarnPed.com, shoot me a private message in-game. If you cannot get me in-game, send me an email at sbrags62 at gmail.com. 
That's sbraggs62 at gmail.com with two Gs. S-B-R-A-G-G-S 62 at gmail.com. Subject line withdrawal. In the body of the email, let me know your in-game avatar name, your earnped.com name, which should be the same as your avatar name, and how much you're wanting to withdraw, and also what planet you're usually on. I've been planet hopping. I will be on Next Island a while. I'll be back on Arcadia and Rocktropia too, but I will be stopping by Calypso frequently. Um, I also have alternative ways to get you guys the ped. Uh, should I not be present on planet, uh, we can get it worked out. So guys, I'm going to leave it right there for now. This is step one of three on how to get the uh, next island auto loot pet smarter, not harder. And also ways you can make money from the auto loot pet mission. Like I said, sometimes you don't even need the pet. If your goal is just to make money, maybe you can go get the 20 lore pets and tame them for somebody who doesn't want to. Maybe you can help level up somebody's pet because they don't want to spend three days on next island, but yet you're going to be here anyway. So guys, I'm going to leave this one right there, and we will be back with another video for you very, very soon. Take care, Stevies.